are what are some of the categories you think often maybe get neglected or missed? Um, I, I mean, I hit a little bit on the, um, just the networking because of the lack of time earlier. Um, but I think that even email gets overlooked a lot. Um, I talked to a lot of attorneys who may have started an email initiative, whether it's a newsletter or some sort of a drip campaign, and then it's just something that kind of falls by the wayside. And so it's not as common as I would think, but I, you know, kind of live and breathe this every day, but that one seems underutilized, I think. Absolutely. And I also think like, even if you're a smaller firm out there, like if you're a solo, you don't have a marketing team, <clears throat> like I still encourage you to categorize your marketing this way because you, you you probably are doing more than you realize or or could be doing more than you realize. Like maybe the digital ads category, that might stay empty for a while. Fine. Like maybe you're not going to spend any money on paid ads, right? But you're still going to do networking. You can still probably either put on some events or get involved with some local events. Um, you definitely can do content email marketing, blogging, social media, right? So there's a lot of things on here that you can still do. Um, you know, you could look for speaking opportunities. You could look to join local local TV or radio shows. So there's a lot of stuff you can still do. And again, that's why those cate categories are so valuable because you may not even think to explore local events or you may not even think to explore um, local speaking opportunities, right? But they're out there. And if you have a marketing plan that has space for that kind of stuff, then you also kind of force yourself to look at it and go, maybe I should put some time, energy, effort, et cetera, you know, into some of those areas. Let's see. Uh, what are some examples? Yeah. Yeah, Freed Mary Kate's question here. Thank you. I am. I am. What are some yeah. options? Or yeah, you yeah you you, you want to read it to us? <laughs> yes. Um. What are some options or examples of optimizing business to business marketing when most of your clientele is international? Um. AKA alternative time zones or a few opportunities to network in person or maybe even non English speaking. Yeah. Yeah. Great question. I'll 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 try to tackle this and um if I don't quite answer it, just kind of respond and let me know what else you're looking for and and I'll see if I can get to it. But I actually don't know that much has to change, okay? And so, yeah, we're talking about a category like networking. There aren't as many virtual networking opportunities. So if your clients are, I mean, it doesn't even matter necessarily international, right? If, if your clients are just not in the same city or area that you're in, that, you know, obviously makes like networking kind of a harder marketing category. But you think about some of these other categories, like anything, anything that would be considered content marketing. So things like social media, email marketing, um, videos, podcasts, blogging, right? All, all of this doesn't really matter where someone's located. And so I think that content marketing is really valuable in cases like this. And in terms of them speaking a different language, there's a few things you can do. You could choose to actually publish some of your content in a different language. Um, if it's content that's on your website, like a blog, there are also a lot of plugins for websites that are a lot more sophisticated than they used to be, that, that you can actually have your website be converted to different languages. But we, you know, we do a lot of content for our clients, and we've had plenty of situations in the past where clients have actually just rewritten certain pieces of content in a different language, and, and we've published that for them. So you know, it, it wouldn't be that crazy, for example, to put out an English newsletter and a Spanish newsletter if you wanted to do something like that or put, publish your blog in English and another language. So there's a few different options whether or not you want to publish it yourself. I'm sorry, translate it yourself or have a plug and do it. But listen, that's just content. I mean, think about the rest of the things that are on here, things like like digital ads, like running Google ads or social media ads. You know, those things can all be targeted by location. So no matter what state or country your prospects are in, you could run ads that are um, based on location and geography. So, you know, there, there's there's still a lot of opportunities. Um, you also could look for events that those people would attend. And maybe there's opportunities to speak at those events or sponsor those events. I don't know if that those events would be in the countries of those people or if there's events that are closer to you that they would come to. But again, all this advice applies to hopefully everyone that's on this webinar. It doesn't matter if your clients are local or not. You want to be thinking about events. It doesn't matter if those events are in person or virtual um, or if those events are local or something you have to travel to. Um, Spotlight Branding travels a lot every year to conferences because you guys are at them, right? <laughs> we go to a lot of 
bar conferences and things like that. So ask yourself, doesn't apply to everyone, but ask yourself, are there, um, are there events and things like that where my target market does go to? And if you're B2C, right? Like if you don't work with, with a lot of business owners, sometimes that's harder to figure out. And there are events out there that would be your everyday, you know, customers, not necessarily businesses. But if you are more B2C, also think about where your referral sources are. For example, if you're a divorce attorney, I don't think it would be crazy at all to think about how you could speak or sponsor um, some sort of conference, speak at or sponsor at some sort of conference for marriage counselors, right? Okay, marriage counselors are a great referral source. That's also a great way to really build your authority and things like that. Certainly, if you could do that with a more like local conference, that would be better. But also always think out of the box too. It's not always about where your, your clients are. It's also about where maybe your best referral sources might be. So, that's a great all point. right. So that's, that, that's kind of step number one, which is, which is figuring out like what you're doing. But hopefully we've helped you guys realize that's more than just being like, I'm doing social media or I'm doing um, Google ads. It's also about figuring out these categories and, and really understanding all the stuff that you could be doing even if you're not ready for it or now is not the right time. So from there, let's talk about now when you're going to do it or right, what should the chronology be for your marketing plan. All right. And that's going to be um, that's going to be as simple as identifying if this is something that you're doing on an ongoing basis or or is a one time thing. OK. And then, of course, if it is a one time thing, when is it being done? Um, the template we gave you guys is broken up by quarters. And honestly, I think for most of you, that's probably fine. If you if you have a lot of marketing going on, you might want to consider having a marketing plan broken up by month. OK, so that way you can just see things spread out a little bit more. Um, but but ultimately, I really like having a marketing plan by quarter and kind of just literally writing in the things that you're doing in the quarters you're doing them in. So now on one page, you can see all the marketing you're doing. And you can also see if there's any situations you might be light, right? Are there any quarters that you don't necessarily have enough marketing? Jana, I mean, we experience that here with ourselves, right? We do. Absolutely. And I think kind of going back to what I said earlier, too, I think whenever you do find a time that is light, I think it's worth seeing, you know, what do you have more available in terms of resources? Is it time? Is it the ability to travel mm -hmm. and go to some of these conferences? Is it the, that you have the, you know, time to blog yourself or maybe do some videos or do you want to, you know, maybe do some paid advertising? So um, I do love the idea of quarterly, too. I think it just makes it feel more manageable and more like something you can do consistently versus every single month, four times a year, you're updating it. And that just feels more palatable to me. So yeah, I, yeah agree. We, I, we I agree. agree ourselves. And I think the other, like, again, I know we're saying something a little bit obvious here. Like, of course, you're going to put down when you're doing it. But I think that, you know, I've looked at marketing plans before and it's just like, it's just not clear to me, like, is this thing ongoing or recurring or is this, is this a one-time thing? Mm -hmm. Right. And so having ways that you, you, you delineate between those items on your marketing plan. It could be through color. It could be through a label. It could be putting an R at the beginning of something to note that it's recurring or an O to note that it's ongoing. But this is helpful because, you know, in a perfect world, the more marketing you can identify that is ongoing, that is recurring, right? Stuff that you can kind of do and just keep doing is super valuable, right? Um, and being able to see that when you're looking at your marketing plan, what marketing falls into either being recurring or ongoing is, is really valuable. Um, but a lot of times, and, and we're no different at Spotlight Branding, that all has to be supplemented with one-off things like putting on an event or going to an event or something like that. Also, you might decide that you want to try something for a period of time. You might say, ah, yeah, in quarter four, I really want to try Google Ads. So you go in and put it on there, but just for quarter four. Now, if it works, you might expand it to be an ongoing thing, but it also allows you to kind of make note of things that could be ongoing, but maybe you're just trying them out initially. A little bonus tip that I want to give everyone, and it's kind of the second half of the slide, so you may have already read it, <laughs> but a bonus tip I want to give you is to use placeholders. Jana was talking about how things might be light in certain areas. Um, 
I think sometimes a marketing plan can be intimidating because you don't know everything you want to do. You certainly don't know two, three, four quarters from now. And by the way, I'm sorry to mention this earlier. My advice would be to try to do these, um, to do these if you can, if you can, always projecting three quarters out. So you've got the current quarter plus three. So you've always got basically a, a, a 12 month marketing plan, right? Um, but I know that it gets a little bit harder the further you get out to really know what you might want to do. So use placeholders. Um, look like if you know that uh, in this quarter you want to try Google ads or you want to start a podcast or you want to hire a social media agency like Spotlight Branding, like great, like pencil that in. Let me take it a step further though. Maybe you don't know what you want to do. You just know you need to do more. Okay, pencil pencil that in. Hey, two quarters from now, I know I need to do something more. What area do I think I need to do it in? Now, here's, here's where those categories help you. I don't know exactly what I want to do, but I can maybe say, I know, I know I need to be doing more content-wise, or I know I need to be doing more networking. I don't know exactly what group I want to join or agency I want to hire or what I want to do, but I'm going to pencil in just you know, campaign A, right, or, or whatever. And, and then what you, you know, that forces you to do on whatever cadence you are working on your marketing is you realize at some point you got to go to decide what that's going to be. But what you're essentially doing is creating a goal for yourself. So, so you can look at your marketing plan, see where you're light and pencil stuff in. Don't be afraid uh, to use placeholders. Jan, I know we had one or two questions come in in the question yeah. section. Were any of those um, anything I should grab? Yes. Um, so one, uh, Monte asked about just sharing the slides. So if anyone would like the slides after the presentation, um, I can include those whenever we send out the recording because we are recording this as well. Um, and then we had another one. Is it possible to provide a comprehensive and detailed table of contents for a marketing plan? Um, and I guess just to clarify um, on that one, is that something like, is that, are you wondering if the table of contents is helpful for the marketing plan you're building or do we have one already? Um, yeah, like that's what I was there. wondering too. Like who, who would the table of contents be for? Like, are you, like, are you talking about if you had your own marketing plan wanting to create a table of contents? General um, table of contents. Yeah. You know, so obviously it's kind of hard cause, cause you know, you're typing and we're talking. <laughs> um, so if you, if you ha have a second to explain, go for it. I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you my, my answer, but if I'm misunderstanding something, please let me know. But I, I, I'm having trouble seeing the value of a table of contents. And, and listen, I'm, I'm, I'm always a keep it simple and then make it better kind of guy, right? And so, Janet, you can go to the next slide, actually, because it, it, it's, it's, it's another, it, it's again, it's a screenshot of this template we showed you guys a few minutes ago. Like, I'm a big believer in keeping a marketing plan simple right? Having it be on one or two pages. Now, maybe if we were, if we, I wonder if what we're thinking here isn't a marketing plan. Okay. Let me explain what I mean. If you're, if we're talking about things like who's our target market, what's our marketing message? Um, what are our unique selling propositions? What's our elevator pitch? You know, um, what, what are our colors? You know, what's our style? Do we have any design rules? I, I don't, I'm, I'm, and by the way, I'm not saying that you guys need everything I just said, okay? I'm just trying to think of some of the things that might be on a list like that. That's more of like a marketing guide or a design guide or like a marketing brief. Um, something like that, a table of contents could make sense to me. But a marketing plan is kind of a, a living document that's always changing. So, the way I picture a marketing plan, I don't think it would need a table of contents because it's going to look kind of like what you see on the screen right now most times. There's not a right or wrong way to do a marketing plan. So to the person asking the question, maybe the way you picture it, maybe a table of contents could make sense, right? And, and uh, if you want to share any of that, I'm happy to kind of tackle that more as we keep going. But in terms of a layout, like the one you're seeing on your screen now, where you're actually building categories and then you're building chronology and doing some sort of table, even if you weren't doing a table, even if you're doing a Google Doc and your chronology went this way, 
you know, generally speaking, I, I don't know the table of contents would be necessary would be my would be my thought, but I'm always open to kind of seeing seeing how things like that work. So if you want to share further on on how you think that could uh, help you or benefit, I mean, we might all learn something. So I really appreciate the question. Um, but going back to the, the the chronology of things, and again, we're going back to this template here. You guys can see now how we have those four quarters, right? Again, if you're doing a lot of marketing, you could just picture this being bigger, okay? Um, um, but hopefully, um, hopefully that's kind of making sense to everyone. All right, Jana, let's talk about step three. So we're more than halfway home already. Um, so we, we talked about how to identify what you're doing and how important categories can be. We've talked about um, now actually placing those things chronologically in the right place, okay? Maybe using placeholders, penciling things in for the future, maybe trying to have a 12-month marketing plan at any given time, okay? But, and this may be obvious, but we need to keep an eye on what this is going to cost you, okay? And more often than not, you know, we're referring to um, money, but this could be money or time, mm -hmm. right? Um, so, you know, smaller firms um, might have more time than money. So another, you know, another benefit of your marketing plan is it can help you see where you've got more marketing going on than, than other quarters or other months. And again, looking at that marketing going, okay, well, what if this marketing is time consuming and what isn't? Because networking events, things like that, probably going to speaking, probably going to take up more of your time. Some of those things that are kind of in the background, like um, maybe running some ads or things like that, you're probably not the one doing it. Um, it's probably not going to take up much of your time. If you want to start doing some content marketing, like blogging or social media, it probably depends. Are you going to do it yourself? Are you going to hire an agency? Do you have someone on your team that could do it? Right. So I think both taking into account the time cost as well as the financial cost um, is really important. I, I'm imagining if anybody has any questions, let me know. I'm imagining that I probably don't need to spend too much time talking about the financial side, right? At the end of the day, obviously, if you're going to do marketing that costs, that has a financial cost, you want to track that. So this is just like building a budget for anything in life, right? By having having all this written down on the page, we can also note what we think something's going to cost and we can kind of total that up at the bottom or at the top. And we can make sure that, you know, we're within whatever budget we have available each quarter. And again, this is why I like building a plan out in the future. And if you don't know what the finances are going to be in six months or nine months, that's fine. Just take a guess, pencil some things in. You can always change it and modify it. But you have an idea of kind of, uh, you know, of what you might want to spend. Um, Jana, one of the questions that we know comes up a lot, too, is like what um, like what's a good uh, what's a good amount for my marketing budget? I know you've heard me talk about this a little <laughs> bit. Do you have any thoughts? Um, it's probably the same one you have, which um, is commonly kind of touted to spend, I think, 10% of your, I believe, gross income on marketing. Yeah, it's just your revenue. Yeah, that's for your rule of thumb. Yeah. That's, that's the one I've heard. I think that, um, you know, it can be daunting, um, especially if you are solo and like really small, just getting started out, which is why I'm a big fan of, you know, kind of knowing what your, your cadence looks like and knowing when you have more time to dedicate time versus when you have more money. Um, and I think the other note that I'll add is the importance of updating those numbers after the fact if you are estimating. So if you think you're going to spend $500 over the next quarter on um, digital ads and you you know realize it's more or less than that, kind of having that documented, big on documentation, mm -hmm. so that you can reference it next time you want to come back to it and have a better estimate to better kind of budget it. Yeah, you know, and, and you know, we, we experience this a lot in business, like, just because you were under budget isn't always a good thing. It, it, it depends on what the reason is, right? So the other reason that I, you know, I really like budget being an important part of your marketing plan is because, like, I, I, there's not a lot of pride, in my opinion, in underspending in in your marketing. And yes, you could say I'm a marketing guy, I own an agency, so maybe I'm biased. But at the end of the day, marketing is an investment in your business, right, to help you grow your firm. And so. Um, it's one thing to put everything into your marketing plan and see and see what that totals to. It's another thing to commit to spending a certain dollar amount or a certain percentage of your revenue on marketing so that now you can also look at, are you actually investing back into your firm the way that maybe 
you 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 should be or that you might want to consider doing right and 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 so there are situations where the benefit of this entire practice of building a plan might help you realize you're under investing in your firm right you're not doing enough you're not spending enough or conversely that you do have too much going on or you are spending too much and maybe that's why things feel tight or maybe that's why the marketing doesn't feel effective because maybe you have too many things going on at once so I think both, you know, or I'm sorry, either one can be true. And um, but more often than not, you know, I, I do see the first one be true pretty often where where um, where a firm isn't isn't spending nearly enough. And, you know, this is all relative, right? This isn't these aren't factual statements. These are obviously opinions. Um, but the generally speaking, compared to a lot of benchmarks about what businesses invest back back into their business or into their firm, 10, 15, even 20% isn't unusual. So we, we definitely encourage that as a benchmark to consider. And again, your marketing plan can hopefully serve you in realizing um, if there is more opportunity or not to kind of invest back into your firm. Um, um, yeah, I'll double, yeah, I'll double check marketing plan. Yeah, it's something about the the link there. Yes, um, yeah, I believe when you fill that out, it will um, prompt us to then like reach out and send you the marketing plan from there. So we do get notified and can send you the marketing plan from that one. Um, but I can make a note to make sure we send it to you specifically. Yeah, I can see how that's a little bit confusing. Sorry about that, because there's a box that says, how can we help you? I mean, we do, we're, we're a marketing company, so we like to track everything. <laughs> so filling out that form will get you the the marketing plan template. But then it just kind of helps us have data around like who downloaded and stuff like that. You register for the webinar, so we already have your <laughs> your info, but we, we like to know who did it. So uh, that form maybe isn't worded the smartest. So uh, sorry about that. Um, but uh, but you fill out that form and then it's going to um, it's either going to take you to the download page or it's going to email it to you. I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure. I believe you. I believe email. Perfect. And if anyone doesn't know what we're talking about, it's that link at the bottom of the slide spotlightbranding.com slash marketing plan. If you go there and you fill out the form, you're going to get that marketing plan template for free. Um, again, if you're here, you're already on our email list anyway. So, um, you know, it's really just about us kind of tracking data, just being good marketers is all. So yeah, practicing what we preach, of course. All right. If you have, if you have any other questions about, about budgeting, about cost of your marketing plan, throw them in the chat, but I'm going to move to our fourth, uh, fourth and final point. Um, which is a real big one, which is now you've got to identify what you think is going to happen. This is the one that most businesses, not even just law firms, most businesses don't do. They've got a marketing plan and in some capacity, it might have categories. It definitely includes what they're doing. It probably includes when they're doing it. To some degree, most marketing plans probably touch on budget or cost in some capacity but very few marketing plans actually make note of what needs to happen or what you believe is going to happen with that marketing. So there's a couple of different buzzwords we can use here, okay, like results, goals, projections. That's what we're talking about. I want your marketing plan to have those things, results, goals, projections in some capacity, okay? And the reason for this is twofold. Number one, it helps you assess performance. But but if you step back from, from that uh, kind of a step before, you, it also forces you to kind of identify um, what something needs to accomplish in the first place for you to assess its performance. And if you remember back when we were talking about categories, I mentioned that one of the benefits of categories, depending on how you do it, is you might create categories based on goals, right? Like this kind of marketing needs to accomplish this but this other kind of marketing may have a different focus. Not every piece of marketing that you ever do is just meant to generate business. It all leads to that. Of course it does. It's all connected, right? But when you send an email newsletter to your email list, right, that's not the same type of activity as, as running ads on Google. And you would measure success of those differently, okay? Um, and then there's other scenarios where there's certain kinds of marketing that one business or firm might assess this way 
and another business assesses it a little bit differently. Okay, social media would be an example of that. Some law firms out there might be able to do social media in a way that it generates clients for them, that they generate leads from social media. They've unlocked the social media strategy for um, followers, engagement, and kind of growing their following. Um, that tends to be the exception, not the norm, right? When we do social media for our clients, it's more of a, a branding thing. It's more of a let's use social media to keep you in touch with your existing network. Um, and so that when somebody does find you and they're doing their due diligence on your firm, you kind of have that box checked and you have credible content on your social media platform. So in those two scenarios I just gave, in scenario one, a law firm might be looking to generate leads from social media. And scenario number two, a law firm might be more looking for social media to serve as more of a nurturing activity and as a branding activity. Now you might say, well, I want both, or I want all of the above. That's fine, who wouldn't? But it is valuable to assess what's, what does something need to do to be successful, right? Because to use the example I just gave you, more times than not, for a law firm, social media doesn't need to generate leads in order to be successful. It has other results or goals that it can accomplish for a firm. Something like Google Ads has to create leads. That is the sole purpose of it, right? And so if it's not doing that for your firm, it's failing. So, so identifying what you want to happen or what you need to happen is really important so that then you can, you know, ultimately to some degree, you know, actually actually take a look at that. You know, Jana, we can jump to the next slide um, and, and, and I'll kind of let you let you kind of add add in whatever you'd like to. Absolutely. Um, so, yes, we have kind of four four steps here, um, but I would say when it comes to if it can be measurable, awesome. But I do think there are some examples of things that don't have a like an ROI that is tangible and something like a business card, like a business card. And when you say measurable here, we're talking like an actual number. True. Yes. Right. Measurable in terms of, yes, like strict, strict number and data. Um but yes, like a, a, a new business card or even like a new website or new logo, which have all of these inherent benefits that are really tough to put tangible numbers behind, I think is a great example. But there's still something that are really important. Um, that being said, I love numbers. I love data. And as much as I can be able to track things like that, I try to. Um, but the content marketing versus ads is, a, is another big one that we we see a lot here at Spotly Branding because we do content marketing. And a question we get a ton is, is how is it measured and what is the ROI that our clients can expect to receive? And it can be a tough one. And I think it can be based on specifically what you're looking to achieve, which I'm probably getting into a whole nother webinar at this point. But <laughs> but um, the ads definitely, I think, are on the easier side when it comes to really being able to measure and see that ROI and see if this is something that you want to do again. Right. Um, Right. Yeah. No, like in other words, in other words, in other words, here's how I would word it. Like, OK, if you can place a numerical goal or projection for something great, but two things to consider. Sometimes sometimes you can't. OK, um, other times maybe you can, but that thing isn't really what you care about. OK, so, you know, a couple of examples that might be I talked about email newsletters earlier. Right. You could you could focus on something like your open rate or on social media. You could focus on engagements or followers or likes. But do those really represent success? I mean, maybe depending on what your goals are. Right. But we know from doing content marketing for a while that the best ROI from an email newsletter is going to be referrals because you're staying in touch with your network more so referrals are going to go up, right? So your goal your goal of something like your newsletter might be to see your referrals increase, okay? So you can still have something numerical, but now it's kind of cor correlation, right? Um, or like the example we have on the screen there, number four, you might have some marketing activities you do. Granted, it would probably be fewer, but you might have some marketing activities you do that's not even about an actual numerical outcome. Like maybe you want to do some of local events because you want to feel like you're more part of the community. You're trying to, maybe you're trying to build some PR, maybe you're trying to build into the company culture. 
And so even just identifying that as the goal, right? We want to do this thing because afterwards we want to, we want this to be true. Maybe that's something measurable, a number, maybe it's more of a feel thing, but the bottom line is the habit I want to encourage all of you to get into is when you're doing marketing, identify what is the main thing or the main one or two things that marketing is to accomplish. And then you can set that goal or you can set that projection. And then as that thing is happening or after that thing ha is happening or has happened, you can actually go back and look, did it achieve the goal? Right. Yeah. Oh, I was going to get to the next one on performance. Again, the marketing plan that we are giving away. Yeah. Well, and again, I know they can't quite see it, but the reason we keep, keep coming back to it is like we've got sections inside of those squares for like results or some sort of projection. OK, you could do this per per kind of quadrant or, or section, or you could do this for every single individual piece of marketing. You could identify a result or a goal. OK, so the template's meant to be kind of a simple starting point. But, you know, you know, definitely you can make it your own. Absolutely. Uh, and color coding. I'm big on like spreadsheets and color coding. So feel free to kind of run with this and really make it your own. Um, but yes, when it comes to assessing. Um, for sure. I, I, I will repeat it till the day I die. Documentation. Um, you want to know all the facets of what worked, what didn't. And I would even say, um, sorry, just to, to start running with this one, Mark. Um, but if something doesn't necessarily hit the goal or the projection that you were anticipating, I think one thing that we've learned is to look at a whole bunch of different external factors and see if it is that thing in a vacuum, or maybe it was not the best time of year to do that thing. Maybe that thing, um, you know, had these external variables that made it not perform as well as you thought. So I wouldn't say just because one thing didn't perform at the level that you expected it to should mean that you shelve it forever. Absolutely. Um, I'm curious to know if anyone out there um, who does a marketing plan, if to any degree you do identify your goals or your projections, mm -hmm. if you be up for sharing that um, or how that's gone for you, we'd love to hear from you. But but correct. I mean, ultimately, look, I think there's two things to consider when, when you do this. Uh, a couple of things, actually, I should say. Number one, don't be afraid to guess, okay, mm -hmm. um, at what you think is going to happen. Like, you could take a total guess. And then because here's what's going to happen. If something doesn't perform like you projected or wanted, usually it means one of two things. Number one, um, that thing underperformed, right? And so you need to question whether or not you want to keep doing that thing or, or, or if that thing needs to be modified or improved. But the second possibility is maybe your goal wasn't an appropriate goal. Maybe the number was too high or, or whatever. Or in some cases, and I'll be honest with all of you out there, we have this with our clients sometimes where we might be doing, I kind of gave you an example earlier of like social media or newsletters or blogging. And um, sometimes, and these are, these are conversations we have with our clients, but sometimes the goals are just focused on the wrong place. You know, uh, when we do content marketing for our clients, we're not necessarily focused on if that's going to improve their Google ranking or get the phone to ring more. Um, what we're focused on is if it's going to increase referrals. Um, a lot of our clients are, are able to charge higher rates. So all, all of a sudden, you know, the ability to uh, improve your brand and your credibility and your reputation, that's a form of ROI, right? And so sometimes something may appear that it didn't work, but it actually just worked in a different area then you maybe were looking for it to work. And so these mental exercises and these experiences are, are, are really valuable to go through. All right, let's, we got a quick little bonus point and we'll wrap up here in a minute. So hang tight, don't leave us just yet. And if you do have any final questions, drop them in the chat now. And, and you know, um, I, I have the ability to hang out a few extra minutes if we need to and, and answer any questions. So if you have any boiling, you know, drop them in there now, but kind of want to share this thought with you and then we'll give you a bonus, a bonus tip at the end. But Listen, a shitty marketing plan that's written is better than the perfect marketing plan in your head. I kind of alluded to this earlier. If you hear, if you don't hear anything else today, hear this. The best thing you can do is just get started on getting things written, organized. Don't worry about the perfect categories. Don't worry about the perfect projections or numbers. Just get started because that written marketing plan, even if it's crappy, is better than that perfect marketing plan that, that it's just in your head versus being written, right? Yeah. 
Um, but listen, here, I got a bonus point for you guys. We kind of told you there's four main things to do here, which we got on the screen there. But here's the fifth one. It may be obvious. I'm not sure. So I wanted to say it. But you need to monitor and repeat. Create this marketing plan. And then throughout a quarter, check in on it. Check on how the marketing that you're doing is going compared to what you wanted it to do. Look ahead at what marketing you have coming up so you can make sure that you're putting in whatever work needs to be done in advance. If you have any placeholders, for example, and then repeat. I would suggest once a quarter, you sit down and update your marketing plan uh, you know, um, as a more, uh, as kind of a longer thing you're sitting down and doing, right? You can monitor this with a 20 minute meeting once a week, but once a quarter, you maybe sit down for an hour, a couple hours, because what you're actually going to do is you're going to review the past quarter that's now fallen off and you're going to add a new quarter to your marketing plan, right? And even if you're just penciling everything in. So that's, that's kind of a, a hopefully a given, but it's one thing to sit down and create this. You probably could take a half day and you could create this from scratch if you haven't yet. Monitor it, create some sort of weekly or bi-weekly check-in for yourself. And then once a quarter, sit down and, and update the marketing plan kind of, you know, by adding the next quarter. All right. One more slide, then I'm going to jump to the chat. Um, if you listen, I, I really hope that you got value from this. Um, if you're looking for something different or something more, like, please let us know. You can email us at info at spotlightbranding.com. Um, um, we do put on a lot of these webinars as meant to be valuable for you. So please, your feedback is everything to us. That said, if you do have interest in working with us, we focus on content marketing specifically so we can do your social media, your blogs, um, your, your email newsletter, we can do things like that for you. So if you want to schedule a free consultation, go to the link there, spotlightbranding.com slash schedule. I think Jana might drop it in the chat as well. Um, but it's a completely complimentary consultation. We'll have a discovery call. So if we can help you with the content side of your marketing, uh, let us know. We'd love to do that. Um, but does anybody have any any questions or comments before we wrap up? Um, I appreciate everyone that's that's engaged so far. But if anybody does have any final thoughts or final questions, throw them down there in the chat, and um, we'll kind of hang out here for a minute and see if anyone thinks of anything. But uh, yeah, I hope that that was uh, that was helpful. Jan, any final thoughts from you? Um. Uh, only that I will be sending out the recording and the slides and I'll go ahead and probably throw in the marketing plan template as well um, so that everyone has that. So you'll have all the resources. Um, but no, I think I think not biting the bullet, but going ahead and right now here we're still in early July, mid July. I think now is the time to go ahead and get it rolling. Um, you can even have it for the next couple quarters and then yeah, just go ahead and get it done. Don't keep pushing it off. It would be my last little bit. Um, oh, Patricia, wrong. Yeah. All right, time. Well, hey, we got the whole thing recorded, Patricia. Yeah. So, and if uh, and if as you're watching, you <laughs> have any um, questions, you know, just shoot us an email. Um, mm -hmm. You can get us at info at Spotlight, or honestly, you can hit up Jana. She'd love that. Uh, I would. Jana I would. SpotlightBranding.com. Why don't you drop your email in there, Jana? Absolutely. It's like Jana with a J in front of it. Don't call her Jana. Call her you Jana. And. Uh, and you guys will get along just fine. But appreciate the comments and the feedback. Doesn't look like we have any questions. We did. We actually do have one. Oh, we did. Okay, great. Um, yes. Yeah, so um, William um, asked, do we do holistic marketing beyond content? I can answer that one if you want. <laughs> I love, William, I love the words of holistic. Uh, it, it's, well, it's yeah. funny my, my wife, my wife is in medicine and has talked about holistic medicine. So my, I, I'm guessing you didn't mean like holistic medicine. Um, um so yeah, great question. So we, as in Spotlight Branding, we focus just on content and that's very deliberate. It would be uh, similar to how most law firms are going to maybe focus on a practice area or two so they can be really good at that, at that practice area. So we believe in a large uh, amount of, of, or forms of marketing, if you will. Um, but we feel like to be good to be very good, 
at marketing that we needed to focus on a practice area, if you will. And so our practice area is content. So we strictly do content and we strictly do it for law firms. And so we're going to do things like we're going to actually write your blogs for you. We're going to actually create your social media content for you. We're going to uh, do video FAQs and actually give you the topics. Um, you know, we're going to actually put design and send your email newsletter every month. Now, you have input on these things. You have approval on these things. We've got a whole process to where you still feel like very much you're part of the creation process. But um, when you start adding other areas of marketing on top of that, it just becomes hard to continue to be good at those things. So it's not for a lack of believing that you should dabble in all of these areas. But but just like a law, um, a law firm might focus on estate planning or family law or business law or criminal defense, uh, where we, we ourselves focus on certain areas. And then we certainly can provide referrals for other areas of marketing. So uh, thank you for that question, William. William was not a plant. Uh, we did not plant him there to ask us that question about us. So I appreciate that, William. Um, any other questions either about Spotlight or about your marketing plan? Any coming through, but again, feel free to email info or Jana at spotlightbranding.com um, with any, and we'll, or if you just want any other resources and with any feedback. If it's nice, send it to me. If it's not as nice, you can send it to info at. Yeah. But do send it either way. We do want your feedback. Yeah. And uh, if you have any topic ideas, if there's something that you would like us to do a webinar on that would serve you and your firm in, in any sort of marketing capacity, let us know and we'll do our best to put something together. Again, we put these on for you guys. So your feedback is everything. So please, please, please um, email us info at spotlightbranding.com or Jan at spotlightbranding.com. Tell us what you liked or what you didn't like or what you might like in the future. Uh, please, please, please do that. It's very helpful. Um, all right. Well, no more questions came in. I hope it was helpful. And I hope that we will see you all either on social media or maybe on one of our future webinars. Thanks, everyone. Bye.